Track for our first major hurricane of the season. I'll pinpoint Barrel's path, plus I'll break down tomorrow's biggest storm threats here at home next. Live from ClickOrlando.com and WKMG, we're getting results in your neighborhood now at 11 p.m. These are people that are in want, right? These are people that are actually in need. Now at 11, Haiti, already embroiled in turmoil, now bracing for hurricane season. The local nonprofit closely watching the tropics. Plus, Governor Ron DeSantis cut millions of dollars in art funding for the upcoming budget. Coming up, I'll tell you how a local theater plans to fill that gap. No one, no one is above the law, not even the president of the United States. And President Biden reacting to the Supreme Court expanding presidential powers, how that decision could shield former President Trump from criminal prosecution. But first, Hurricane Barrel continues to make history. Minutes ago, we got word from the National Hurricane Center that this thing is now a Category 5 storm. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Matt Austin. And I'm Ginger Gadsden. Barrel is the earliest Category 5 hurricane on record in the Atlantic Ocean. New 6 meteorologist Jonathan Kegis joins us now with a tropical update. And Jonathan, Barrel is a beast. It is, unfortunately, yeah. It did a lot of damage to parts of the Windward Islands, and now it continues to strengthen at this hour. 938 millibars. The pressure continues to drop. When the pressure drops, the winds go up, and now we do have those winds. At Category 5 intensity, 160 mile per hour sustained. There's a Hurricane Hunter aircraft in the thing right now, and that's what reported back with flight level winds of more than 180 miles an hour. And again, at the surface, we have winds of 160. Latest track on this takes this very, very close to the island of Jamaica. Again, right smack dab in the middle of the cone anyway. It's working its way towards the north and west. Then it'll continue towards the Cayman Islands and work its way into the Yucatan Peninsula around Belize. And then this is where the United States is still in place. Still some uncertainty as to where it goes once it gets back into the southwest Gulf of Mexico. Could make a sharper right-hand turn and take this thing toward Texas. Louisiana even still in place. Still, though, this does not look like it is coming to Florida. We also have thunderstorms of our own out there moving through central Florida. Light show in downtown Orlando. We are going to pinpoint that for you coming up in about 15 minutes. Jonathan, thank you. Some new images coming into our newsroom tonight of the damage left behind by Hurricane Barrel. The first hurricane of the season made landfall this morning as an extremely dangerous Cat 4 storm in Grenada. If you're looking at a map, it's a small island just to the north of Trinidad and Tobago. Now, at landfall, Barrel had winds of 150 miles per hour and a life-threatening six to nine foot storm surge. We have not gotten any report of deaths or injuries. As Hurricane Barrel moves westward, it appears Haiti will likely be spared from a direct hit, but the embattled island nation could still be impacted by the storm's outer bands. It comes as the country is already in turmoil and out of control ga gang violence. New Six's Troy Campbell spoke to a local woman who is helping Haitians both on the island and here in Orlando. Their conversation is new at 11. And a heads up, the same organization Troy spoke to is having a big event tomorrow. People can get wellness checks, clothes, food, haircuts, and more, all for free. It runs from 10 in the morning until 2 at Magic Mall on Colonial Drive. Something we wanted to make you aware of if someone you know is getting off late from work. Firefighters just had to put out a bad vehicle fire. This is on I-4 near the Turnpike, not far from Orlando International Premium Outlets. I was looking at this thing just before we went on air, and it was a full-on raging fire. Looks like they've done a good job getting it out. Our shot's kind of glitching in and out there. Emergency crews have one lane blocked off for this right now. Use caution if you have to go out, and be sure to slow down and move over for the crews. We'll let you know when we get an update. In Brevard County, Florida Fish and Wildlife have identified the man who fell from what they're calling a homemade airboat. Haven't heard that one before, but the body of Brian Rodriguez was recovered from Lake Washington on Sunday, a day after the search and rescue operation began. According to FWC, he was on a boat with a woman who was driving. She told officials at some point she noticed Rodriguez was no longer on that boat. She turned around, couldn't find him, then called police. FWC says Rodriguez was not wearing a life vest. Over the last several months, Governor Ron DeSantis has been busy signing bills passed during the legislative session. Today, nearly 200 of them 
went into effect. Ginger is over at the wall tonight to give us a look at some of the measures that could have a big impact on families. Yeah, Matt, first, the new penalties for drag racing and intersection takeovers are nothing to mess around with here. You could be fined up to $4,000 for being involved. And just for watching, you could face a $400 fine. Another new law impacts separated parents. All sheriff's offices in Florida are now required to designate a safe location for custody exchanges. These parking lots or in parking spots are under 24-hour surveillance. And this one's a popular one. It limits what homeowners associations can issue fines for. So gone are those days of violations for leaving up holiday decorations for too long or leaving out trash cans. Again, there are nearly 200 laws that went into effect today. They include one that allows homeowners to shoot bears under certain circumstances, though, and new rules for releasing balloons that comes with big fines for violators. See the full list right now at clickorlando.com. One law that did not go into effect today would have dedicated more than $30 million in grants to arts and culture nonprofit groups. Governor Ron DeSantis actually vetoed it. News Six's Treasurer Roberts explains how some local organizations plan to fill the hole in their budgets. Now to restoring the dunes and extending the beach. A much anticipated project along one of a local shoreline is now days away from getting underway. As we've watched it erode away, the buffer between the building and the water has gotten so small. A closer look at the project and the key role this massive pipe will play in getting all that work done. You're watching News 6 at 11 live on a Monday night. We're getting results for College Park, Daytona Beach, and all of Central Florida. This portion of the news is sponsored by Rubenstein Law. It's time to play America's favorite jackpot game. This is Powerball. Good evening, America. I'm Michelle Lyles. Tonight, we've got another life-changing jackpot for you in an estimated amount of $126.6 million. Get your tickets out. We'll start things off tonight with the number 55. Right after that, America, we have nine. Let's congratulate Lisa Hayes of Illinois, who won $2 million playing Powerball. Your next number up tonight is 39, followed by 32, and we'll round it out tonight with 5. Now, for your winning Powerball number, good luck, everyone. It is 9, and your power play multiplier is 2. I've never entered a contest before, and my name was number one on the list. You're a winner today. I am. News 6 hit the road to East Orlando and asked you to tell us your concerns about your community. You said this dangerous abandoned mobile home park was a neighborhood hazard. It looks like, you know, a bomb or a hurricane just went through there. So we got to work, investigated, and got results. Now it's being torn down. Needing you and helping make positive change in the community is why News 6 is hitting the road. How can we help you? Go to clickorlando.com slash hits the road now and let us know. Well, officials are keeping incoming hurricanes in mind as a dune renourishment project in Flagler County gets ready to get underway. The Army Corps of Engineers is dredging sand in to restore miles of dunes. We've shown you how even small storms have eaten away at the county's dunes, even knocking out sections of A1A. New 6's Molly Reed is on Flagler Beach with a look at how this project hopes to stop that. Today, yeah, for sure. And someone noticed earlier today we hadn't seen the normal rain we normally get in the afternoon. You know what we're getting now, though? What? We're getting a little rain. Jonathan Gegas is joining us at the wall. Jonathan, what's going on out there? Yeah, we have a little bit of it, a lot of lightning as well for us right around the central Florida area, guys. Hey, Popka down to Orlando, downtown Orlando, uh, into Kissimmee, St. Cloud. We're seeing the light show as well, kind of paralleling, running right along I-4 right now. It's drifting back towards the north and west. We are dry along the I-95 corridor, Palm Coast and Daytona Beach. Melissa, New Smyrna Beach wants me to do the rain dance because they have been bone dry. We just have not had that sea breeze pattern and have, uh, pushing things from west to east. Everything has been kind of tied right into the uh, I-4 corridor, and especially for us 
along I-75 for us this evening. 82 degrees is where we stand right now. We have that thunderstorm going on at the airport. The breeze right now out of the south at about 10 miles an hour. Every now and then you can see a lightning strike back in the background. That's a live look in downtown Orlando with our light Orlando delivering hope sky cam. We're at 77 in Kissimmee, 82 in Orlando, 83 for us in Sanford, Palm Coast. Good evening. We are at 83 Melbourne in Mico. We are checking in at this 11 o'clock hour just after at about 82 degrees. Now here's a look at your pinpoint accurate forecast. Sponsored by Strata Air Conditioning and Heating. AC emergency? You ought to call Strata. Temperatures tomorrow get back into the low to mid 90s. Again, we're at 94 in Claremont, 94 in Kissimmee, Cocoa Beach. We're checking in tomorrow afternoon right around 90 degrees. Again, we'll be on the drier side at the beach. Now we're going to do the same kind of thing again tomorrow. Here we go at midnight. Some of those storms still hanging around for the next hour or so. Those again are drifting back to the west and will gradually fizzle out. So again, we're going to stay on the drier side again along the I-95 corridor. There's 6, 7 o'clock for us on your Tuesday morning. We're starting things off dry. I think through the early afternoon, we're going to be on the dry side as well. That is 3 o'clock, maybe a stray downpour, but still I think a lot of us are dry until we get towards the latter stages of the evening. I think we'll see a higher chance for storms tomorrow, but a very similar behavior, how we get things going late into the evening, and then some of these linger again. That's 7 to 8 o'clock, and you see that flare-up of storms slide on through, which we will continue to do again on Wednesday evening, right on into the 4th of July. You see it, things really fill in early on uh, Thursday morning. Temperatures on uh, tomorrow getting back into the mid 90s. If you're heading to the theme parks again early in the day, we're going to see things on the quieter side. If you're sticking around for fireworks or trying to see that, though, that's where we could have some issues again as uh, things fire up late into the afternoon and really into the evening. Beaches looking pretty good, though. Everything fires up inland. Temperatures tomorrow back to the upper 80s again. Do Watch out for that rip current risk. In terms of your tides in Daytona Beach, we're going to get a low tide tomorrow morning at about 1037 Cocoa Beach at about 1018 in Flagler Beach, Beach just before 10 o'clock in your morning. Now here's a look at your pinpoint accurate seven day forecast. Temperatures back to the mid 90s. Tomorrow and Wednesday, rain chances go back up again to 60% both days. We'll go down a smidge on Thursday for the 4th of July. 50% shot for storms on Friday, and then we are heating things back up. Just a little bit more, guys, heading into the upcoming weekend. All right, Jonathan, thank you. Here are tonight's winning Powerball numbers again. 55, 9, 39, 32, 5, and the Powerball is 9. Here are tonight's winning lottery numbers. Pick 2, 7, 9, pick 3, 2, 3, 3, your pick 4. 1903 and you pick five. 18560 and that fireball is six. And fantasy five, three, six, nine, four, and thirteen. Cash for life is three, twenty, thirty-four, forty-six, fifty-seven, and the cash ball is four. Good luck. Sports director Jamie says here now. Jamie, the magic may make more moves, huh? They did make more moves. Oh, they did. They, yeah. they did. Yep, they do in free agency. You know, that's what you have to do when mm -hmm. this thing starts. Uh, the magic are keeping the band together, guys. Those As they should. Yes, <laughs> those details are on the way. But up next, the U.S. men's soccer team fights for survival in the Copa America tournament. The Americans needed a win to stay alive. I'll have the highlights and the results against Uruguay. This portion of the news is sponsored by Freedom Health Medicare Advantage Plans. It's really about getting the truth, trying to dig down and figure out how this story impacts you. We're breaking down exactly what's happening so you have the answers you need before you go to bed. News 6 at 11. Look, we in America are good at lots of things. You know, we men's <laughs> soccer <name them>. might <laughs> we not be. We still have work to do. We still have work to do. We got a do. little work. You know, yeah. and uh, mm -hmm. this Copa America tournament yeah. is another example that we have work to do. The U.S. men's soccer team understood the stakes tonight. The Americans knew their best chance of advancing to the Copa America quarterfinals was to beat Uruguay tonight. News 6 at 11. We'll be right back. Discover the magic of color at Crayola Experience, Orlando's most colorful hands-on family attraction. All right, a new 28,000 square foot pickleball facility <laughs> is coming to Orlando's Soto District. Look inside here. Look at what? this. This is not a new Google headquarters. <laughs> this is where people are going to play with a wiffle ball and some paddles. It'll be right there off South Orange Avenue on West Grant Street near the Target. 
The facility will have seven pickleball courts, but the owners say the elevated concept mm. will keep players coming back for more than just the game. Okay. There will mm. be a space for dining, a oh, bar so you can get hammered while you play, <laughs> and a cafe and more. The facility's on I Grand like Street. I says people will be playing there. He's one I of am people. definitely yeah. going to try that place because I love pickleball. <laughs> I'm going to try it too. All right, thank you so much for joining us for the news tonight. Have a good one. See you on Bye. Tuesday.